so, so Umer is going to do the real talk. <laughs> and I will just uh, decide it. I leverage my CEO powers to come here and say a few words uh, before that. Uh, so how many of you heard about Percona? Well, besides us being a sponsor here. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. So, and I think many of you probably have heard about Percona as MySQL people, right? Or maybe you heard about us as uh, folks who are really radical about open source. Percon, I think, is different from many companies, is what all our software is open source, right? Like, I do agree with a lot of stuff what Mark was saying, but I would add comma, and it is better if that is available as a 100% open source solution. Now, I'm not sure how many of you though knows what Pircona also loves Postgres very much. And that is for a very good reason. Actually not one, but a few. One, I think, is PostgreSQL is the most open source database Right? And I think especially in this age where you can see a lot of folks changing their licenses to non-open source or kind of some quasi-open source licenses with uh, PostgreSQL remaining as a uh, license, a very permissive license, is fantastic. And in fact, it is developed as a community project, gives a confidence to everyone involved that, that is to go and to stay this way. That is fantastic, right? Then also PostgreSQL is the most advanced open source database. And I think that is another uh, great thing about Postgres, and again comes from the power of an ecosystem with so many participants. If you think about all those uh, uh, plugins and extensions PostgreSQL uh, has for it, it uh, has been absolutely wonderful, especially in recent years, right, when you have extensions such as mm, Timescale DB coming up and making things which have not been possible with Postgres possible now. And also, PostgreSQL is an open source database with most traction. I could show you all the graphs as well, but you know, I was kind of hoping Mark will do it for me, which he did, so we don't need to talk about that, uh, uh, that more. And I think even more what is interesting is what PostgreSQL can be more than Postgres. Right, we see uh, increasing number of projects. We're just saying, hey, with PostgreSQL being such wonderful foundation, maybe we can uh, use it more than PostgreSQL database. Right? You have uh, all seen there. Well, many of you may have seen the Bubblefish project from AWS with uh, Microsoft SQL project compatibility. Another is uh, this uh, FerroDB project, which is early stage project, but it introduced. MongoDB protocol compatibility uh, for Postgres, right? And I think that is a very exciting use which will drive more and more workloads to Postgres, which for me as a person who runs a business around Postgres is absolutely wonderful news. Well, that is just a very brief intro what I wanted to do. And with that, we can move to the real talk and uh, Omer can actually Say something intelligent. <laughs> you have high expectations of me, Peter. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Peter. Thank you, everyone, for coming in. And uh, you know, I am so psyched to be here. Finally, after such a long time, we get to meet in person. Lots of friendly faces, partially hidden by masks, but still there. Uh, we're here to celebrate Postgres. Let's celebrate Postgres. Now, when I started first working with PostgreSQL, this was back in 2004, I used to frequently hear that people want to use Postgres because it's cheaper. Today, when I talk to folks using Postgres in real enterprise world, um, I hear we use Postgres because it's better. Over the course of 17 years that I have been involved with Postgres, we have seen the database going from it being the cheaper option to it being the better option. That's phenomenal. Now, 
I look at the website, postgresql.org, and I see it listed as PostgreSQL is the, most, the world's most advanced open source relational database. I think we should ditch all of those qualifiers in there and just call it the most advanced database, because that is true. But we've got here, where do we go from here? That's the question that I would like to address during this, uh, during this talk. There are three points that I'll be making, or at least trying to make. The very first one is the databases are evolving. Databases are evolving really rapidly. If you look at the past decade, uh, there has been a phenomenal growth of specialized databases focusing on very, very specific use cases. Got some examples right up there. And at least in part, this, uh, this growth has been driven by the need for rapid ap application development and uh, scaling of, uh, of applications, something that the traditional relational databases, including Postgres, by the way, were not really able to provide a good, good solution for, which made room for these specialized databases to prop up. Uh, the developers also wanted to get rid of the confines that SQL imposed on them uh, and uh, the restrictions that the relational model uh, imposed. They just want to get stuff done. They just want to uh, develop applications. Now, with that advent, very quickly, uh, advocates of NoSQL also started hitting the limitations of, of NoSQL and the, no, the, the unstructured model. Um, it's all good to be able to dump all of your data very, very quickly in your data stores, but unless you can convert that data into information that your business can use, it's really useless. Um, and that was one of the major, major bottlenecks. And uh, NoSQL very quickly became not only SQL. Um, also, uh, more recently, we've started seeing some of the generic relational features popping up in uh, what used to be specialized databases. Uh, an example right there is asset guarantees that you now have available with MongoDB. That was never the case uh, till just a, few, few, uh, just a few years back. Now, while this was all happening, Postgres, of course, was not sitting still. Um, year after year, a very disciplined release cycle with every release averaging more than 150 new features coming in. Uh, Stagger that across uh, a decade, more than a decade, and what you get is, well, the latest release coming out with Postgres 14, lots and lots of new features, many features focusing on some of those specialized use cases that these databases that had popped up over the decade was trying to address. So essentially, the way I see it is, um, and over the course of the decade, the pendulum was moving towards those specialized databases with the relational database fighting back, the, it's, more, uh, it's coming towards more of an equilibrium point where the specialized databases have some relational features and the relational databases now have more specialized use cases addressed uh, in them. And that brings me to the first conclusion uh, for, for this talk, and that is PostgreSQL's future adoption will be driven by how well we balance the relational capabilities with the need to scale modern applications. The second point, it's, this is about the decision making in the tech world. This is about how people decide what technology to use. Um, let's go back uh, a few decades um, and look at the way um, uh, decision making was working, if you look at the 80s and 90s, uh, it, is, it was what is called the sales-led growth model where decisions were made on golf courses and yachts over handshakes. Uh, you get the top executive of a company uh, on a golf course, go through a round, convince the person to adopt your tech, and you're done. That, that's all that was needed. Now, over the past two decades, that model gave way to what is called the marketing-led growth model, where the focus is on advertising, the focus is on brand awareness, so that people come to you, you don't need to go to people, which is why it's called inbound. Now, both of these models are mostly top-down decision-making, where you convince the top people 
of the company, and then it's their job to propagate that, uh, that decision within the organizations. Now, what I find very interesting is that these patterns seem to be changing, uh, and they're changing more rapidly uh, in the recent uh, year or so. And before I go into that, uh, I want to show you a few numbers right here. And now, these numbers are from the open source data management software survey that Procona runs every year. This, these numbers are from, from last year. Uh, by the way, the new survey is, is up there. Um, it, uh, you can access it at surveymonkey.com slash r slash Procona survey. I would highly encourage you to, to take five minutes. It doesn't take more than five minutes uh, to, to participate and, and give your views in. I think it's very valuable. But what I want to show over here is that when our respondents were asked who makes the decision on what database technology to use uh, in their organization, almost 70% said that it was architects and application developers. Now, more than 50% of our respondents were actually DBAs. Take a moment to let that sink in. DBAs are telling us that database decisions are being made by architects and application developers. It's not management. It's not DBAs, it's the folks that are leading application development. Now, that actually plays in really well into what we have seen growing rapidly in popularity, and that's product-led growth. So we started off with sales-led growth, go, went on to marketing-led growth, and today where we stand is what's called product-led growth. And in this model, the decision-making is completely flipped. It's completely bottom-up. Technology is evolving at such a rapid pace that it's simply impossible for top executives to keep pace with it. And increasingly, the top executives rely on the folks that will be using that technology to make the decision on what to use, hence bottom-up. And the users of the database technologies are not database experts. And that brings me to the point of it's been far too long that database vendors have been able to get away with really bad UI and poor user experience, mostly because the people who were writing checks, or at least making the decisions to write checks, were not the same people as would be using that technology. But now that's changing. And the only way to be able to grow from here would be to delight the end user, which in the case of databases are application developers and architects. And that brings me to my second conclusion for the day. PostgreSQL's future adoption will be driven by how easy it is for application developers to deploy, use, and maintain their database. The third point, the spirit of open source. We're all open source enthusiasts over here, otherwise we won't be sitting here. But let's take a look at, you know, and well, um, open source has taken the world by storm. I don't think there are any two opinions about it. There's nothing to debate about over here. Open source is now forming the core of uh, pretty much every piece of infrastructure software. Now, why, what makes open source this popular? First of all, we have to uh, nod at the community. It's the community that comes together because of the passion for the technology. Like-minded people coming together from all over the world, bringing the diverse ideas, bringing their passion, and driving the project. Roadmaps are decided not based on what's good for profit, but what's good for the project. That's a clear differentiator, and that drives quality. The passion drives quality. Um, and of course, you know, uh, and uh, I just alluded to those, ra uh, those rapid development cycles where Postgres has been coming out with a major release every year in a very, very disciplined manner, uh, which uh, helps with project evolution. But most of all, open source adoption has been so popular because the software is free. Now, before we say too much about free, let's take a moment to understand what free actually means. You see, free is not just about cost. It captures a much bigger concept 
a much holistic concept of freedom. And when it comes to open source, and when it comes to the spirit of open source software, this freedom is about choice. This freedom is about using that technology. This freedom is being able to scale the technology and deploy it whenever you want to, wherever you want to. It's the freedom to modify, it's the freedom to distribute, and most of all, it's the freedom against vendor lock-in. And that brings me to the third conclusion, and that is PostgreSQL's future adoption will be driven by maintaining and promoting the spirit of open source software, and that's freedom. Now, what does that mean in today's world? We've come so far, where do we stand today? Where do we need to go from here? I didn't even need to write what this logo is. I think that's that, it's that popular. The rush towards cloud-native application development, uh, the, the, the leaning on Kubernetes orchestration is so strong, again, driven primarily by the ease of use uh, for, for, uh, for, for technologies. But Kubernetes and databases have had a very interesting relationship. It started off as uh, somewhat of a broken relationship because Kubernetes was initially designed for stateless applications and databases are the exact opposite uh, of, of stateless. But in recent years, we've seen some improvements uh, for stateful um, applications uh, with Kubernetes. Now, what does Kubernetes promise? Um, it promises the operator to manage your application stack just like the way an operating, operating system would manage your processes. Right? So you don't need to worry about uh, spinning up processes and killing them um, as, as your application stack grows or shrinks. It promises self-healing that allows for robust node management. Uh, it, allows, it, it, it promises a framework that can automate extremely complicated database tasks, which is all very attractive, uh, again, to our primary audience of application developers and architects. And that's what Percona is trying to lean on, and uh, that's what our approach to Kubernetes has been. So we provide the operator for Postgres, which you know, it's, it's based on the operator that Crunchy Data has created. And what we do is that we harden it with enterprise features, and you can install it directly or through Hemchart, and it will always be open source. But that's not really the end of it. There are unsolved problems. And one of the main problems that remains unsolved is, well, we've taken complexity away from one technology and added complexity for a different technology. So yes, Kubernetes operators allow you to obfuscate the, the complexity of, uh, of, of databases, but now you have the complexity of Kubernetes to deal with. And running business critical stateful application in Kubernetes is it's not an easy job. It's, it, it's complicated and you need uh, a certain skill set for Kubernetes to be able to, to do that. And that's where database as a service comes in. Right? And that's the state of the art simplicity for databases. Now what DBAS does is it takes care of many things for you, including uh, managing uh, Kubernetes. It manages high availability, uh, the DBAS provider will, will patch your database for you. There will be backups. There will be some performance tuning. I say some because, well, I think the claims are much higher than the actual ground reality. Um, and it's easy to scale. All you do is, you know, so you swipe a credit card and you can scale. There's, there's a certain promise that DBAS gives you. Um, the claim is that it's open source compatible, but in reality, it really is a Hotel California kind of cap capability. You can check out any time, but you cannot really leave. So what is our vision to cater to that problem? What Percona wants to do is to provide a DBAS experience in public and private cloud space with open source software ensuring no vendor lock-in at any level be it at the database level, be it at the infrastructure or the cloud provider. You should not be locked into any single vendor 
on any tier of your application stack. With that, mark your calendars. 7th December, that's just five days away. That's when we launch the tech preview of the Procona platform, the platform that stands for evolution of databases, the platform that ensures that it's easy to use for application developers and architects, and the platform that stands for freedom, freedom that it captures the true spirit of open source. Thank you very much for listening in.